Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game from round one of the 44th Chess Olympiad. On the white end, India's Vidit Gujarati playing on team one of India, board one. They have three teams in this event. His opponent from Zimbabwe, international master Rodwell Makoto. Opening wise, we have a King's Indian defense. I think if you're a fan of this opening, you'll enjoy this one, especially if you play the bayonet attack or maybe find yourself trying to defend against it. I think there are a lot of useful tips in this one game. So, b4 on this move 9 is what denotes the bayonet attack. What are we looking to do as white? We're looking to break with c5. We're looking to play on the side of the board where we have space. How does black interfere with this? a5. There are only two good follow-ups for white. One is bishop a3, keeping the tension, still in a spot, to play c5. Or, the move played in the game, b takes a. If as white you're reacting to a5 with uh, a5 with b5, uh, it's this opening, this attack is being misplayed because after b6 this shuts down the queen side there will be no good pawn breaks and this buys black all day to make progress on the king's wing f5 f4 this is probably not going to end so well for team white all right b takes a in the game rook takes a a4 this is an important pawn to invite into the mix uh if at some point black wants to clamp down on c5, make this break harder to get in, well, white is now only going to be a step away from engaging with that b6 pawn, creating more tension, creating more open lines. All right, from here it's knight d7. This knight will be really strong on c5. Black is also clearing the way for the king's Indian defense break, f5. So this guy needs to be challenged in order for white to make progress in this game. The king knight has that responsibility. They are exchanged. And surprisingly enough, as early as this move 14, the most natural move in this position for black, f5, that's a blunder. White is now winning. <laughs> Not so clear why that is the case, though. I'll throw it to you as a pop quiz. Uh, white to move, what is best here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, here we go. The best move is c5. Why though? Let me first note, c5 was not played in the game. This was Vidit's biggest think of the game. He spent about 22 minutes on this move 15. He ends up playing f3 in this position, reinforcing e4 being in, in a spot to meet pawn takes with pawn takes. And by maintaining a pawn here, white is maintaining control over black's worst position to piece, the knight on e7. Let's see why c5 is so good. There are a couple captures, but before I touch on the captures on c5, let's look at a line where black says, I'm all right with allowing this pawn break. I don't want to bite. I'm just going to allow you to take on d6. This is really, really bad for black. Notice these nice developing moves. Bishop to e3, nice forward move, generating a threat. White's moving forward. Black is running in reverse. Black is making awkward moves, obstructing the bishop. If you go here, there's knight to b5. There's a problem there. White is getting all these open lines for free. No, no material investment. D6 can be hit. The rook could enter on the seventh rank. This is really, really bad. Approaching a plus three advantage for white. The big question here, what happens on the captures? Well, first, this is the simple one to cover. If you take with the pawn, there's now D6. That's going to hurt. That's a check. This is the downside with F5. The king is exposed. The queen's already on that diagonal. The knight's going to fall. The big question, what's happening if rook takes c5? Not so clear. Not the most natural follow-up. The best move in this position is now a5. 
What's that doing? It's robbing the rook of a safe square. C5 is now the only safe square for the rook. And nearby there is bishop e3 winning the exchange. How does black stop that? One might think f4, but there's another path to track down the rook. Not knight a4, because there's rook takes pawn. We first make this one baby move, one step, bishop d2. And now, next up, there's knight a4. This will be defended directly, and the rook is a goner. If you want to save the rook with b6, well, hang on, how valuable is this pawn? Computer likes this position a real lot for white. Plus five. <laughs> okay, anyhow, c5 is there, tactically. In the game, it's f3. Next up, king h8. Uh, another move that you may want to keep in mind as black here uh, King h8 is one of the top moves, but another one to maybe consider playing on the black side is c5. Uh, what, is, what is one way to interpret c5? What is that move maybe saying here? c5 is saying, aha, the queen side is now closed. What are you going to do about it? You want to open up the queen side by taking en passant? Well, if you do that, you're now uh, inviting my second rank knight uh, into the center square d4, the weakest square in your camp, and you're going to have to work around that knight. This is uh, something to consider as black. It's another path forward. In this game, it's king h8. My first thought with king h8 is, oh, okay, you're... You're getting off the diagonal. In fact, that was really my only thought. But in preparing for this video and looking at some different lines, I realized, oh, you know what? There's an additional point. So I'd like to highlight what that is. It is opening up the g8 square for the knight in some cases. Uh, wh why is the knight maybe useful on g8? Well, if, if this pawn is always going to be maintained, yeah, we, we we're going to try to reposition the knight to maybe f6, h5, f4, or note that the knight on g, g8 is also uh, allowing black to maybe consider uh, this strategic idea to exchange dark square bishops. Now, this is a a decision that black must weigh very carefully, especially with the queen still on board. If we exchange dark square bishops, the king can be, the black king can be a bit more vulnerable. Um, but what I can say is if the queens are off, I think this is almost always going to be a desirable exchange for black to get the dark square bishops off. Something to keep in mind. It is not only, not only about getting off the diagonal, but this nice pivot on g8 is available with bishop h6 as an idea. All right, from here we have bishop a3. This rook needs to be given a shove so that white could get in that c5 move. From here, uh, black now plays c5, so one move later. Uh, an additional move, here's a mistake I ended up making myself. Uh, I think this is a, uh, ju just like f5 was a mistake, a, a very natural move, but... <laughs> It turns out uh, it, it's it's flawed. Here's a here's a mistake I ended up making in preparing for this video. After if, if instead of c5, if b6 is in there, uh, bishop b4 is a good follow up. And what do you think the next move is here for white? I'll just share it with you. The move I thought was the automatic follow up. A5. That's not working. It looks really natural, right? We made all these moves here. We got the bishop on a3, the bishop on b4. We want to get the break in a5 so that we could get in c5. It's not there because black has this c5 move again. This is this c5 move is showing up uh, against the bayonet attack. What's the problem now? Well, if you back up, you're dropping the pawn. And if you're capturing on c6, hang on. 
This pawn is now hit for a third time. What are you going to do about it, Team White? How do you save the pawn? This is also an option. Maybe this is still an option. And if you're capturing here, you're losing. White is losing because, look at, we could have the queen do similar. Take advantage of this, this king that's on the open diagonal. Right? We have uh, a couple variations I'm highlighting here where each side's queen could be a great pest to the king. Uh, the bishop is going to fall next. Anyhow, my point here is that if b6 is played in this position after b, bishop b4 and rook to a8, it's important not to play a5. This is still a, a, a fine position for white. Uh, instead of a5, best would be knight b5 first. What is that doing? Well, it's preventing c5. If you play c5 now, there's a problem on d6. So only after knight is on b5 and the bishop is here, only then could white next uh, look to play this a5 advance. These are important <laughs> uh, structural details uh, to note. Okay, in this game, it is c5. White wants the position to open up, so d takes c. Knight takes C. And from here we have bishop to D3. We have a, with this last move, well, the bishop on D t, on, a, on E2, excuse me, what was it even doing? Uh, it has a role now. It's watching over E4. There's a, a, a changing of the guard that is happening here. Now that the bishop is securing E4, uh, this knight is free to go elsewhere. It wants to go to b5. Next up, we have bishop h6. Uh, there, isn't, there isn't really a good way to prevent this bishop from taking up this active post on the a7 to g1 diagonal. Um, in the game, Vidit puts his king in the corner. He says, if you're going to get there, you're not getting there with check. It's a move I'm going to have to make anyway, so let me just make it right now. If you try to... Uh, stop bishop to e3, that's, it's not going to work. Uh, if rook to e1, there's, there's bishop to d2. And if you play here, still watching out for this, that's going to hurt. Knight d4, black would be winning. So if black really wants to get into e3, he's going to get in there. So king to, king to h1 in this position, bishop e3, knight b4, and bishop to c5. So there was two on this. This was the best move, defending against d6. And from here, we have rook a to d1. The computer isn't a, a great fan of this move. Uh, there is uh, another continuation, and we're once more, what I'm about to highlight is once more related to a different structure that can surface. Instead of rook a to d1, the computer is suggesting break open this position. It says go ahead and take on f5 first, and then immediately challenge this pawn duo with f4. Now, if you're playing as white here and you're not coming up with this uh, sequence, the capture on f5 and then the follow-up f4, what could maybe... Uh, what are some cues, uh, what are some, some things to look into that could maybe help you find these moves? Notice what happened on these last few moves. What, what did Black do? Black uh, relocated this bishop, went to h6, e3, and c5. What has happened? It's no longer a defender for the king. Uh, it's a defender of the d6 pawn, but it is primarily now functioning as an aggressive piece. No longer a good defender for the king, so this may prompt white to crack open the center. One less defender now for the king. And when we, when we consider the structures, black has one pawn, white has two, white is, uh, white has the safer king. There are no, uh, main diagonal checks that can hurt white, but there certainly are some main diagonal checks that can hurt black. And I'd like to highlight one of them 
right now. A knee-jerk reaction to F4 in this position would be to play, uh, yeah, knee-jerk reaction to this F4 move would be to play E4. This would be losing for black. I like to just put on this variation to show why. There's a check. We could already have some sacrifice. This is a really neat line. Uh, what is this capture doing? It is paving the way. It's a clearance sacrifice for queen g3. And I'm just going to bring it to a point where we win a queen. How's this? Knight c7, and you have to give up the queen right now. Anyhow, if you want to uh, convert your mainly defensive piece into an offensive piece, maybe I'm going to break open the center and I'll have an easier time getting at the king. All right. Uh, a train of thought. Uh, some, some food for thought there. From here, it's rook A to D1. And the follow-up is knight to D4. Can you guess what the best move here is for black? F4. What is that doing? It's saying uh, this is going to be too strong. <laughs> the capture. I don't want to see F4 breaking down E5, opening up the diagonal. So... Yeah, computer wants to keep things closed with f4 here, but in the game it's knight d4. Knight takes, that's an intolerable piece. Pawn takes, we now have a passer. And from here, bishop to c2, there could quickly be some pressure against a4, and this is already now going to be a critical moment for black. This is where black goes astray. It is around an even position, 23 moves in. Uh, a slight time edge for Vidit, I maybe has around a 15 minute time edge at this stage. Not 100% on that, but he does have some time advantage in this position. Uh, this is where black goes wrong. Uh, his idea here is to first capture and now uh, play queen to e8. This is, this is the step in the wrong direction with queen to e8. Uh, the idea is to win the a pawn, and also welcome a queen exchange. Black still wants to get these queens off. Has the more vulnerable king. Uh, considered better is bishop to d7. Uh, I have to show this line. It is, it is a wicked line. Uh, bishop to d7. Check this one out. If bishop to d7, this is, this is a tough one to calculate. Bishop b2, you could allow bishop takes a4. Best move now would be for white to play rook takes d4. Bishop takes queen. Rook takes d6. And now the only, the best move here for black would be to play bishop d4. If you're simply moving the king, bishop d5. Ouch. You got to go into a pin, then the queen falls with check. The best move for black in this position is to play bishop d4. What's the idea? It's to open up the rook's eyes to the d5 square. It's ready to knock out this bishop d5 move. Bishop takes d4 follows. King g8. Rook takes, rook takes. A fork in the end. And we have a position that's basically going to be a draw. Three to two, same side, not much to play for here. <laughs> okay, that's a very deep line. A lot of pieces flying everywhere, discovered checks. It could turn violent very quickly after bishop to d7. Anyhow, in this game, it's queen to e8. Bishop d2, queen takes a. White says, not so fast. I don't want the queens to come off. I'm still, I still have an eye on your king. This is now hit three times. Queen goes back to e8. It's hit three times. It's only defended once. So white has made how many moves here? Rook d1. One, two, three. Now's the time to take the pawn, right? Not so fast. Uh, this is what I like about these high-level games. Notice you're really just extracting the, 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 the most out of every move, not pulling the trigger just yet on bishop captures d4. Instead, inviting another piece into the mix. Rook f to e1 was played. 
setting up some discoveries with the bishop. Queen f7 is the follow-up. Only after these two moves have been inserted does white go ahead and capture on d4. Without question, white is the side who is benefiting with uh, these two moves on board. Without question, this rook right here, open file, much better than being on this f file. Uh, yeah, this move is better than this one. <laughs> Bishop takes d4 as the follow-up. Bishop takes, queen takes, queen to f6. Um, oh, it's also not only about getting to an open file, but if white went ahead and captured right away on this square, there'd be queen e5. So this rook on e1 is cutting out this uh, queen block on e5. Okay, rook e1, queen f7, the captures on d4, queen f6. And from here, white goes ahead and takes this half-dead pawn. Um, after capturing on d4, white has restored the material. And with this next move, he's now going up a pawn. Computer likes ducking the exchange, wants to win this pawn and try and still keep the queens on board. All right. In this one, we have the queen exchange. I think we can officially say we are in an ending. And now I believe the last important point of this game is this move 32. And yeah, it's going to be the last pop quiz of this, of this video. So here's the question. First of all, we have some pressure on c4. How do you defend c4? I'll throw it to you as a multiple choice. A, B, C, or D. What move would you play? Feel free to pause the video. Okay. The only move that allows white to still press for a win is bishop to d3. All other moves, the rook defense or even the bishop defense, let's let me just put this one on. All of these moves allow black to play b5. And that is a desirable break to get in. What's happening here? The queen side has been wiped out. And without the queen side pawns, this makes life a lot easier for black to try and hold this to a draw. Keep in mind a, an important resource that black has here, and it involves this guy here being the wrong colored bishop. So there could be some cases where it's a bishop ending specifically, and this guy sacrifices itself for, I don't know, maybe it's an f-pawn or, or a g-pawn remaining. In the end, uh, yeah, we have this wrong colored bishop idea. Uh, white could have an h-pawn and the bishop versus the lone black king, but it'll be a draw. Uh, bishop d3 in the, in the game does not allow b5. These guys will remain on board, and soon we're going to see that black will be tethered to the defense of the b-pawn. And as a result, that defending piece, uh, its quality is greatly diminished. From here, we get the kings involved. Rooks enter, one rook exchange. Here we go. Not fun to have that responsibility, but that's where we're at as black now. An active an active versus passive rook, king e3, bishop to c6. If the bishop tried to be a bit more aggressive here, bishop e7, you could temporarily go here, have the king step up, and then uh, make some progress once the king and bishop are securing c4. Could do something else with the rook after the king and bishop are watching that. Okay, but what's tried is bishop d7. Black wants to have the bishop guarding b7, freeing up this guy. Now comes h4. White remains solid, uh, maintains the f3, g2 structure to limit the bishop's mobility. And this will be the, the, the pawn softener uh, looking for h5 to not only, uh, to not only uh, extend the scope of the bishop, but also the rook if the bishop is no longer on c, c6. From here, king f6. Bishop e4, 
many ways to approach it from here. You could capture or push. Vid it pushes. Have the bishops exchanged. And now we're down to an active versus passive rook. White is still up the pawn. And soon we'll eventually be up another pawn. Tough position now for black. What do you do here? The rook really can't go anywhere. Has to stay trained on this point. If you go to one of these two, then there's rook a7. Continually uh, putting pressure on the weak points. What's tried is king f5, g4, king back. And there is now a, uh, a new 7th rank, we might say. And these guys have uh, moved away from home. So this is the new 7th rank, the 5th rank. And this rook is going to look to maybe go here or here. And one of these will be won. Not too much you could do about it as black. So discover check. So what? Rook f8. That's the final move to this one. Move 49. Black resigns here. What do you do? After king e7, rook here. A second pawn is going to be won. And at this level, uh, we don't uh, play these games on. The writing is on the wall. So, a uh, very cool game here. I, uh, I really enjoyed covering this one. There was a lot of stuff out of this King's Indian defense bayonet attack. A lot of important pawn breaks could have turned in many directions. Some nice tricks along the way in that middle game. Uh, anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.